Welcome back to From the Beginning, the Mayer Museum of Art at Randolph College. This segment tells the story of how an innovative women's college took root in Lynchburg, Virginia, and introduces the legendary Louise Jordan Smith. In the early 1890s, William Wall Smith, then president of the all-male Randolph-Macon College in Ashland, Virginia, actively campaigned to have women admitted. He felt young women should obtain an education equal to that given to the best colleges for young men. Both the alumni and the staff opposed him and stopped his progress. Frustrated by the school's decision, he suggested a sister college and was told if he could come up with the money and the location, he could build a school. He began looking for cities in Virginia that were open to the idea of a woman's college. He soon ran into a shareholder of the Rivermont Land Company, George M. Jones, who felt Lynchburg would be a perfect fit. Lynchburg was growing and was one of the wealthiest cities per capita in the United States. It had good transportation and appeared to be the perfect fit. Smith then approached the Rivermont Land Company with the idea of them donating to the college. They agreed if he could raise $100,000 in endowments in 90 days, they would donate $40,000 in cash, $60,000 in stock, and 20 acres where he could build the school. He raised $106,000 in just 34 days. Randolph-Macon Woman's College was officially founded on March 10th 1891. After immediately running into problems with the building of the college, Smith decided to leave his post at Randolph-Macon Men's College and become the new president of Randolph-Macon Women's College. The college would open its doors on September 14, 1893, with 36 boarding students and 12 professors. At age 25, Louise Jordan Smith, a Virginian, and cousin to William Walt Smith, had just returned from Paris where she had been studying painting and decided to join the faculty as the first professor of art. She had unusual ideas for the time and felt that art education was not just an elective. It was essential to a well-rounded education. She also believed that the study of art should begin with the works of current living artists. 